I actually bought a lot of denim. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have part two of my European travel vlog. So the sequence of this one is first we are going to hop into the footage of Rome and then the second half will be my fabric haul from Rome. So if you don't care about the travel bloggy part I will uh, have like a timer that will put you right into the fabric haul. But first uh, like I said we're going through my travel footage. I love Rome. Anybody who knows me knows I absolutely adore Rome and that I would live there if I could. So let's go ahead and jump into that footage. We are starting to hit Rome city limits and I'm so excited. I can't wait to be back in Rome. I absolutely love this city. I love the density. I love the walkability. I love the balconies and the old buildings and the surprises around the corner and I just absolutely cannot wait to be back here. So our first step is, of course, to check out our Airbnb. We have a cute little view out the window. We're pretty lucky there's a dome and it's not just straight into the windows of other buildings that feel very close. And then it has this nice little loft above that my parents are going to stay in. And then a couple other bedrooms and a couple other bathrooms. This is a really spacious apartment for Rome. I actually don't feel like I've ever seen one this big. When I was in Rome, I was in a small one bedroom with two other people. So this was very spacious and luxurious to me. And one once we unpacked, we hit the streets. I was absolutely so excited. We started in Piazza Navona, which was really close to our Airbnb. As you can see, it is about to rain here and we did eventually get downpoured on and we took refuge and ate at a restaurant off of Piazza Navona. Admittedly, I would not usually recommend you do this. I would not eat on regularly at any of the restaurants on this piazza. I would go to some of the other alleys and things to eat because these are also tourist oriented and so the food isn't as good and is more expensive than in other parts of Rome. However, we just needed to be out of the rain. I wish I got video footage while this started raining in the Piazza Navona just because you just saw everybody running for cover and it was really something. After we ate our meal, after fleeing the rain, we continued on to the Pantheon. I really like the Pantheon. I really like the square. There's a lot of really great gelato shops around here as well as good restaurants. Very exciting to be back. As you can see, it's pretty busy. There's a lot of people. The line to get into the Pantheon wasn't too bad, so we did go ahead and go in. Definitely recommend going in the Pantheon if you're in Rome just because it's a really, really unique piece of architecture that you won't see anywhere else the way the dome works. I really wish we had been in here when it had started raining because that hole up at the top, it actually rains into the Pantheon and I've never seen it and I think it would be absolutely incredible to see. And I absolutely should have told people we should not go to the Trevi Fountain this late in the afternoon. It was absolutely packed. And it was more packed than usual because they had some blockades up because there was a big soccer cup game in Rome when we were there. So they had barriers around things they don't usually have barriers around to make sure that people don't climb these famous places after either joy of winning or anger at losing. It was so hard to move around here. We did pick up gelato from a shop here. It was okay. It was a mound gelato place. In general, if you can try to eat gelato at shops that don't have the mounds on them because the ones with the mounds on them are usually cheaper or not real gelato. Look for the shops that have them either flat or covered. We are at a set of ruins that they are actually starting to restore, but I really love these ruins because it also doubles as a cat shelter for feral cats. Uh, they have a whole area where they care for and feed the cats around this, and I absolutely love that kind of duo purpose of having these beautiful ruins to look at as well as caring for these cats. I did not get any footage of the cats because they are feral and they're not really like a public thing. It, this doesn't look like anything that exciting, but this is my most favorite thing about Rome. Rome has all these free public water fountains everywhere that are designed for you to drink out of. You stick your finger up in it and a lot of times the water will spread out the top for you to drink. It's a bit of a learning curve on how to do it, but often I just carry really small water bottles when I'm in Rome, if you see my little lime one there, because there's so many of these water fountains that you can constantly refill your bottle for free. 
here is my sister giving it a go. It's it's a process. And she's probably gonna be very embarrassed that I'm publicly shaming her like this. On our walk back from all of these things, we decided to just stop in churches that were open. I think that's one of the coolest parts about Rome is you can just walk into any church and usually there is really, really amazing history, art, and architecture in them and they're just open and free to the public. When I walk around Rome, I make sure at all time my knees and my shoulders are covered so I can duck into whatever church I want since it is important that you respect that these are active places of worship. So make sure to have those covered, but definitely if you're curious about a church, just stop in and look. I had not been in this church before, but look at how beautiful it is. Here is another cool example of the churches in Rome. This was a little church by our Airbnb and I walked in and there was a Raphael painting and I just think the accessibility to art in Rome is so cool and unlike any other city I've been in. A lot of other cities I've been in the churches do charge entry fees but in Rome you can pretty much walk into most churches without an entry fee and you'll be lucky enough sometime to find frescoes by famous painters or statues by famous sculptors or domes by famous architects. The architecture on the outside of this church was really interesting. I I hadn't really seen anything like it and I loved the roses and we ate dinner and then we were close to the neighborhood I stayed in when I was in Rome for six weeks which was Trastevere so you just cross the bridge of the Tiber River over to this neighborhood and this neighborhood is quite the like happening nightlife neighborhood as I'm walking through here you'll see it's very very crowded there's a lot of bars and restaurants I really like. Rome does not have open container laws, so you can like pick up a drink at a bar to go and drink while walking around. And I absolutely love that about Rome. And I've always felt super safe here. I feel like I've read things about it being dangerous, but I've never had issues in Rome. If you're smart and aware and nothing bad is gonna happen. This is the only time we stopped in here and I'm so glad we did it in the evening. People are always surprised in Rome. You do need to be aware in these narrow alleyways because cars do drive down them and you just have to get out of the way. I don't know. I guess as I've spent enough time in Rome, I'm just used to it. But otherwise, that is it for this day and I will see you early in the morning for another walk around the sites. And I always get up early in Rome to go on walks because the city is empty and beautiful and you can see places in just a really magical way because the lighting is magical, there's no crowds, it's just delivery people and people going to work early in the morning. And it's just, there's nothing like this experience of getting all of these places. Because of where my Airbnb was, I started at Piazza Navona where it was so empty, I actually felt comfortable enough to like put my tripod out and film, which is is not anything I would recommend during the day. And then from there, I navigated over to the Pantheon. I was very surprised. It hardly took me any time to get my navigational like map skills back in Rome from when I lived there, just because I thought I would go back and I would not be able to navigate and it. I picked it up again quite easily. So I walked from the Pantheon over to the Trevi Fountain uh, to see it in a little bit more of an empty time. Given this was 7.30 in the morning by the time I got over here, I was surprised at how many people were already there. And again, you'll see those barriers are still up that block you from getting down to the fountain. Usually you can go down where those like curly Q swirly railings are. But yeah, I also was so excited to see the Trevi Fountain this round because last time I was in Rome, it was under restoration. So it was all under scaffolding. So this trip is actually my first time seeing this and it's really, really quite incredible. Sculpting, if you look up how they did sculpting, it's just amazing the detail that they get on things and how lifelike all of these figures look. It's, it's just truly incredible. I thought this morning I would walk you down the side of the Pantheon. It's very interesting because they have ruins. That's another really cool part of Rome is not only do you have cool churches at every turn, you also have really interesting looking ruins that are really ancient. And I just love how alive and ancient this city feels. And here we are back by this church. I'm slowly navigating my way back to my Airbnb. Me and my younger sister went up to our planned tour, which was at the Capuchin Crypt. Definitely recommend you look up photos of this crypt. You can't take photos or video inside, but also this is a artwork piece of 3000 human skeletons um, organized in different ways. And I don't show human remains on my channel out of respect for the dead. After that, we took the Metro over to um, one of the areas that have some fabric shops. And here I sat in the park for a little because it was during their, like there's a time in Rome where everybody 
everybody has gaps in their afternoon to like go get lunch and rest. So during that, I sat in this park, which is again, I didn't know it would have ruins. And I just sat there and I drank a soda while waiting for the shops to open. And then I got up and I explored the area a little bit. I went to two fabric shops here. I will put the names down in the description of one. I don't know the name of the other. And then after that, I went to, it was a designer fabric shop and they had some really, really amazing things. I did not take any footage in these shops just because they were very, very small and I didn't speak the language and I just felt weird. So you'll see these quite often in Rome. There's like flower delivery trucks and they're just always so cute. After the fabric shops, I started my long, long journey back to the Airbnb. This was I think a three mile walk and it involved walking by the Colosseum, which I had not planned on doing. I tried to circumvent it because I don't like walking in this area. This is an area that because of the tourist presence, it's crowded, it's packed, it's chaotic. And I have seen the Colosseum once and once you see it once, you don't really need to see it again. It is really cool. And I did stop and take some footage since I accidentally ended up here, even though I was trying to go around. I got mistaken as Italian multiple times on this walk because I was trying to get through these crowd of annoying tourists and Italians would catch my eye and you could tell they were like complaining to me in Italian and I just couldn't help but feel I disappointed them when I turned out to be American. Here I'm also taking some footage of the Roman Forum. The one in Pompeii is much better preserved but this one is still interesting to look at. I don't necessarily think you need to get the ticket to go into these forums but you can if you want I guess. And here is the only footage I got in any of the fabric stores I went into because there were multiple rooms and there was only one man working here and so he was helping another customer so I was able to take some footage without feeling too awkward. This is just one room and I think there were six rooms in this fabric shop that all looked like this. It was really hard in most shops to figure out what sections were what. Sometimes I was able to ask for help because they spoke enough English but that was not true all the time. The fabric shopping here was amazing and I can't wait to show you what I got at the end of the video. But on the walk home I think the president or someone really important must have gone by because I got stuck somewhere for like 10 minutes because of a motor and I was hot, I was cranky, I was sweaty by the time I got back to the Airbnb. And so that is all the footage I have for today because I was just exhausted. And here we are up very early in the morning, empty streets again. This morning we are going over to the Vatican to do the Vatican Museum as early in the day as possible with a guided tour. So that way it is hopefully a little bit less crowded. I have done the Vatican Museum before. I did not enjoy it because it was so crowded. And so I thought I would see if this was any better because it's a little bit less in the peak tour season in Rome and it was earlier in the morning and we went pretty like afternoon prime time when I went with my school. I thought I would give it a shot and this was also nice because it means I walked a little bit of a different route this morning as opposed to kind of the same route. In this case we went across again the Tiber River over to where Vatican City is. Vatican City is its own nation within Italy but I enjoyed the walk over this morning and then we met up with our tour group and from there we headed towards towards the Vatican museums. And we've officially made it into the Vatican. It was still a decently long line and very hot, even though it was pretty early in the day. These are just some footage of the grounds on the Vatican before we went into the official museum. And we are in the museum. All of the statues here are really old and important pieces of art. This museum is interesting because it's pretty open air and I feel like we're not used to that. American museums are always just very like pristine and closed. Of course, they don't have their most important works outside but they do have some of their important works outside and I just find that really really interesting. I absolutely love the museums in Rome. They are just top-notch for ancient Roman art. If you love contemporary art, Rome is not the city for you but for this kind of more ancient Greek inspired art, it is amazing. I absolutely love this sculpture. I've seen I think three different versions of it in my time in Italy. The Vatican just has a lot of pagan artifacts which is interesting and I don't know that I fully agree with. This is a pagan burial crypt thing that is just beautifully carved. I just love the art here and I love the history here and I just I just love their museum so much and I think the Vatican Museum is a must do but be very very particular about what times you choose to do it. Here I also loved our tour guide. He had had a career as a architect 
art store, which is really cool. He was very knowledgeable. I have enough art history background that a lot of what he was talking about I already kind of knew, but in between I got to ask him lots of different questions around different portrayals of people and like why is Constantine's mother never featured in any of these murals? Because she is the one who actually convinced Constantine to convert. So she is arguably the reason Christianity spread the way it did and she gets none of the credit in any of these murals. And I was also able to ask kind of more about a lot of the murals within the Vatican are propaganda for the church. And I was kind of curious because the Vatican is was so closed off during the times they were painted, like why they needed so much propaganda within the church. So he just, he was just very informative. He knew how to have the answers and discourse with me on my questions and absolutely top notch. I'll link the tour group we used for this. We also use them for the Capuchin Crips and my parents use them for a Colosseum and they're just, they were, they're really good tour guides. They know how to hire and vet their tour guides really well and they usually have more background in these things than like your average guide. Highly recommend them. Check them out. I believe they have tours in a lot of cities across the world. Today I'm pretty much just going to be showing you artwork from the Vatican, um, mosaics, lots of bathtubs. There's a lot of bathtubs in the Vatican Museum. Well, you can just walk on these really ancient floors, which is wild. Not the one I'm showing you here, but all the other floors you see that are mosaic are really, really old. And so the fact that we can walk on them is wild. I thought this room was incredibly impressive. And then as you walk through the Vatican Museums, it's really confusing to navigate. There's all these long hallways with different styles of ornate ceilings and it's just it's truly a wild museum and I just I really like this museum more than some of the museums in Rome because the architecture in it is just insane and the interior decoration is just really something to behold. Also, I just want to point out some of these things that we're walking by are ginormous tapestries. We see tapestries in museums just kind of across the board, but these ones are giant. I was kind of curious, so I asked him if these were made by women because typically t tapestry work was done by women. In this case, it was not. It was done by children and probably questionably ethical. Um, and then this hallway down here, walking through, it is a bunch of maps from a time before they had any modern tools for map making, so how accurate they are is incredibly impressive. And he explained when leaders came through here, this showed kind of that the Vatican had a ton of knowledge that like not everybody had and basically kind of said like they could invade you if they wanted because they know how the land works, which I just thought was really interesting. Here we are, we're going through the rooms before you go through the Sistine Chapel it's always very crowded here but also kind of disappointing because most people aren't actually looking at the art here they're trying to get to the Sistine Chapel first of all you aren't allowed to take footage in the Sistine Chapel so you will not see that on this vlog but also I think it's a shame if you go to this museum and you beeline past everything to the Sistine Chapel because there are so many more talented painters here and we are in rooms with Raphael's that people are ignoring and that just makes me sad because in my opinion Raphael was a much better painter than Michelangelo. Now I'm gonna head into the Sistine Chapel and I'll catch you right back here after. Here we are at the end after the Sistine Chapel. Uh, we still have some art to look at. We will be seeing some Caravaggio's and some Raphael paintings. I prefer both of those painters to Michelangelo as previously stated. While we look at these Raphael pieces, I'll kind of talk about why I prefer Raphael. I think Raphael uses much better color and light and it's just much more dramatic. Like for me, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, the colors kind of all run into each other because they're all mid-tones, but there's much more contrast in these. And these are Raphael's paintings from early career, mid-career, and late career. And I just think all of them are more spectacular than what Michelangelo does. Which to be fair, Michelangelo is not a painter mostly. He is mostly known for his sculpture and his architecture. I feel like my art snobbery is really showing here, but I just, I don't prefer Michelangelo. And I also think he was much less humble than Raphael. I think Raphael was much more humble than Michelangelo. So overall, I am a Raphael stan. And this wraps up Art Hot Takes with Haley. I only took footage from the Vatican today, so we are going to end our day here after the Vatican. We went home and we rested, we grabbed lunch, um, and then I headed out to more fabric shops. 
and today I am sad. We are walking. It is our last morning in Rome. I could absolutely live here. I think if I could live anywhere in the world and somehow magically learn to speak a language, I have no talent for language, Rome would be the city I'd live in. I adore Rome. It's walkability, it's transit systems, the history, the culture, the life, the food. I love Rome. But this is our last morning walk. Today I'm just going to do Piazza Navona and the Pantheon. So here we are walking at about 6 a.m. I believe because we need to be back by 6 30 for our airport pickup at 7 a.m. So this is the earliest walk I did. So the piazzas are by far the emptiest and this is the only day I was here where they had taken down those barriers that they had put up for that soccer game. This was just such a beautiful morning and everything was so empty and it's I know it's hard to get up early but it's so dreamy and beautiful in Rome, so please consider it. I don't think there is anything more magical than if you get up early and you walk around because it's just so utterly peaceful. Oh, my sister came out with me for this one, so I wasn't alone, but I do want to note, like, I feel fine alone in Rome. I get catcalled more in America than I do in Rome, so obviously this was just a brief trip, and I, could, I didn't show you even a chunk of what I love about Rome. There's some really amazing flea markets, one of the European's biggest flea markets, is in Rome. I love all the different neighborhoods. They all have their different vibes. I have spent, I guess now, six and a half weeks, almost seven weeks of my life in Rome, and I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface on this city. And here, because I was able to get closer, I am going to give you some close-ups of the Four Rivers Fountain in Piazza Navona. I believe this is a Bernini. His sculpture work is just incredible. You can see veins in the hands and the feet and the body. As somebody who has sculpted and has carved. I just am always in awe of these pieces. They're just truly incredible. Also, there is the humor of this. these statues. They're all looking away from that church because he believed that church was an eyesore. I love all the artist beefs back in the day. If you get into art history of this time, they all like hated each other and trashed each other all the time, and I'm so here for it. I love that drama. I love that gossip, and art history is chocked full of it. It'll probably be a couple years till I'm back here again, but I love this city, and that is the end of my Rome propaganda uh, and we are now going to jump in to the wrap up and the fabric haul of this video. All right so we have wrapped that up so let me now show you what I got at all those fabric shops. I don't remember the names of each of these fabric shops so I'm going to leave like there's going to be a thing here like there was during the Rome video that is going to tell you or maybe it's over here I don't know one of these sides that's going to tell you which shop I picked what up in. With that we'll start out with uh, some very small things. Things. I will show you close-ups of these, but these are just buttons. It's the colors of these and they reminded me of vintage buttons. There was an Indian fabric shop that all the trims and the fabrics were very, very Indian, but I picked up these buttons because I wanted to get something there and support their business, especially spending so much time looking at things there. I should have gotten some fringe trim in retrospect, but we all have things we regret. They had a lot of really awesome beaded uh, fringes and trims and stuff. Next up, this is actually I think the last fabric shop I went to. I had a really hard time communicating at this one, which that is fully on me. I've learned my lesson. Next time I go and get fabric in a country that does not speak the same language as me, I'm going to memorize numbers 1 through 10 because first I got this little bit of fabric. This is a half meter because <laughs> I was communicating 5 and he thought I meant 0.5, not 5 meter. So I got this little bit of fabric. I feel okay about it. I didn't need it anyway. I do wish I had gotten more. This is also 0.5 and this is of a Bemberg rayon, which they were pretty decent price there. I think they were only 9 euro a yard. And so I would have liked to have gotten more of this since I will use it as a lining. Again, this is all on me. This is not on the shop owner. The shop owners are not expected to understand English because it's mostly local craftsmen coming to them and I'm in a different country. So I should have tried more and in the future I will memorize those numbers. I thought I had them memorized, but then he was saying something that sounded like five, but wasn't five. And so he was saying half and I was motioning five. So it was an easy miscommunication. Then I had gotten flustered. And so, oh, I actually bought a lot of denim. <laughs> 
Uh, so I only meant to get three meters of each of these because you don't need that much denim when you're making a denim project. This is a really nice kind of slate gray le like denim. I'm going on the mission of making my own jeans because I'm so sick of not fitting into jeans anymore and I need something that has like a zipper on the side to get my butt in. Like I can fit a pair of jeans on in theory but the zipper doesn't go down far enough for it to like actually go over my butt. So I got this slate gray. I have five yards of this so I'll probably have some friends over to help me use it. This one has no stretch but it's a nice really light denim that I think will be perfect for like spring and summer and early fall. So yeah, and I really loved this color. I feel like I haven't seen this color of denim too often. So this is another one that I got. I really like the vibrant sea of this blue. I think it's absolutely stunning. I got, again, five yards of this. This one has a teeny bit of stretch. And I definitely plan on making a pair of jeans from this. And then I would also like to make, I have a like, it's kind of like a gunny sacks denim skirt that I absolutely adore, but is honestly too small for me at this point. So I just need to find some trim I love and make it in my current size so that'll be great uh, and yeah I really love this color <laughs> um, next up I bought a bunch of findings at this shop first thing I got was this pair of bag handles. I was feeling very inspired after buying my crochet purse over in Santorini and so I bought a thing so I can make my own crochet purse at some point and I got a bunch of trim. I ended up with more trim than I planned on because again communication was hard. So this is the one I didn't plan on buying. Uh, it's this really pretty red one. I mean it's gorgeous and I will use it because the red is nice and subtle uh, and it has a lot of blue and green in it so it will get used. What I was trying to buy was just the blue but she had cut the the red first before I realized what was happening. This one is exactly the same one as the red one but it's in blue and again absolutely stunning. I can't wait to use this. It's really soft. Sometimes these trims are a little bit more polyester feeling which I did get some of those too. I got this really cute. It's this really cute teapot and berries. I'll figure out how to use it. Obviously you know I will never make an all red garment. Well, maybe I can pull in the lavender in it or the green or this darker red that's in it. I don't know. We'll see how I use this but they had so many really fun novelty trims that were definitely for children <laughs> but I wanted some and then I got this trim this I think all of these I got seven meters and they were really cheap all of these were less than two euro a meter this one here is really cute it reminds me of Greece it's little lemons and pitchers and it's white and blue and I just got this so I can make a dress that reminds me of Greece so that is what I got at that shop um, I enjoyed that shop a lot. They had just books and books and books of trims. I had to show a lot of self-restraint there. The next shop I showed almost no restraint. First up is this really wacky swimsuit fabric. I've gotten into making my own swimsuits and I thought this was so fun and wild and I hadn't really seen anything like it so I'll be making a swimsuit out of this and it'll be really fun. Actually came back to the shop. I had gone to this shop. I had seen this fabric. I was like, oh, wouldn't that be fun and wacky? And then I'm like, Haley, you don't need that. And then I walked all the way back for it. So I decided I did need it. I also got um, kind of a boring lining fabric from this shop. This is for a project that will be, I think in August. I had been looking for certain colors that are really hard to tell on monitors. So being in a fabric shop and being able to pick up this was really great. I think this is just a polyester and it's just kind of a, not quite a periwinkle. It's a little bit more lavender than per periwinkle, but it's pretty darn close and it's certainly closer than anything I found on the web. And then I also picked up this cotton. Uh, it's these beautiful pairs that I absolutely adore and they're kind of watercolory. This is going to replace a dress that I've kept for a really long time because I love the fabric, but it honestly doesn't fit me anymore. And so this is going to replace it. I think this is going to make a really, really sharp and very cute 1950s dress. When I picked it out, a woman helped me grab it. Uh, she was Italian, but she spoke pretty good English. And she was like, oh, is this for a child? And I was like, no, it's for me. But it was nice. We went on to talk about, I was wearing the a dress that I'd made and she's like oh you're really talented and I was very modest and turned bright red and said thanks because that's how I roll. I have never run into subscriber out in public but if I do warning I'm very awkward. Next up I'm very excited about this. I will have to look up the brand. It's a it says creation GE WE, this was near all of their Liberty fabrics, so it's of similar quality, but I really liked the softness of the pinks and the blues. I just thought this was absolutely stunning. I'm gonna probably make this into a gunny sacks like dress with a lot of lace and it's a really, really beautiful light cotton. It was expensive. I believe this one was 38. 
euros a meter which is a lot and next up i finally found an eyelet i like but it is absolutely stunning i'm really picky about eyelet fabric because i think a lot of eyelet fabric ends up looking really really cheap i've wanted to make something eyelet with like a beautiful collar underneath that just peeks through or that you can wear a slip that peeks through i don't know i don't have a full game plan for that and i finally found the fabric to do it with this was also pretty pricey i believe this was 28 euros a yard uh, it's also really soft and like I said, it just, it feels really quality. Which brings me to my last one. So this is a chiffon I picked up. I actually picked this up before the like shiny satiny polyester stuff I showed you earlier for a lining. But this is sheer. It's more of a chiffon. It's really, really pretty. I might still use it in that project. TBD. I didn't know what I was going to come across in the future and... While it wasn't exactly the perfect fabric, it was the perfect color. So I went ahead and took a gamble and picked it up. And then this last fabric, I'm so excited to show you. So this is an Ali Sab uh, Silk. This is hands down the most expensive fabric I've ever bought. It was 58 euros a yard, um, but look at this. It is absolutely stunning. I love like the abstractness of it. I think my plans are to make like a 1930 bias cut uh, gown for this, from this. Uh, however, whatever I make from it will have like three mock-ups before I cut into this because this is obscenely expensive. I do think it's still a really good price for silk because like I think about the fact that most mood silks that aren't even designer silks are up at like $89 per yard. And at the point when I was in Italy, the dollar was pretty close to the euro, so it was probably about like 62. So about $20 cheaper than anything at Mood, and they had so many designer silks, I wish I could have filmed it. They had Chanel, they had Gucci, they had, like this was a designer silk place. And that is why I had chosen this place to go to, is I knew they had really high-end designer stuff. And I'm not super into designers, but I figured it would be fun to go. I was not planning on buying anything. That wraps up this haul. I hope you all enjoyed it. I, I'm so excited to sew some of these things. You'll see some of these things sooner. You'll see some of them probably next summer. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed definitely hit that subscribe button and stick around to see what these get made up to. You can always leave a comment down below. It really helps me out in the algorithm as well as giving this a little like. Uh, I love her name's Beverly Butterfly. You should definitely check her out but she always says leave me a cheeky little like and I think it's so cute. I mean of course she's English. It doesn't sound so great in my American accent but I think it's hilarious. And with that I will now see you next time. Bye!